this is the latest and greatest M1 equipped iMac. It's the one with the new stylus design with a bunch of comments and criticism about this white bezel design. But we're not here to complain about some of the flaws. Well, we are. But, but I don't want this to be a nagging video about the newly redesigned iMac. I'm just gonna go ahead and review this unit as it is, as this was my daily driver for one whole week, and this was the result. So this is a mid-tier, newly designed iMac. And going with the mid-tier, basically this is what you get. You get two USB-C ports, so you have a total of two Thunderbolt 3 and two regular USB-Cs. The big differences between these two is the Thunderbolt 3, support faster transfer speed up to 40 gigabits per second. Now newly redesigned body is actually really insane. I mean, this is the thinnest iMac that Apple has ever produced and it's really gorgeous. Well, from the back, I really do like this massive oversized Apple logo. I think it looks very presentable, but unfortunately I know for a fact, most of the time this much prefer pleasant to look at side will be always constantly facing the wall. So not a lot of people are going to be able to see it but this thing is insanely thin and a new magsafe connector that's in the back let me just go ahead and power off this machine matter of seconds it powers off you can literally pop this thing off and just carry this thing around it's just ridiculous like i could literally take this to the kitchen right now if i wanted to and plug it in and continue where i last left off on whatever project i was working on that's how convenient it is this magsafe plug not only is this cable extremely luxurious well it feels extremely premium but it's quite unique how this connecting port works and you literally just click it on and the magnet just place it in place and it's really it does require a nice tug to actually unplug it. So by moving the power adapter, you're not gonna simply accidentally unplug it while you're working. Now, since this is the mid tier, this does have the ethernet cable port on the power adapter. So if you wanna hardwire your machine, you can, but honestly, this is really useless, especially since the only benefits you'll really get, A, obviously hardwire connection, low input lag, but gaming on an iMac, isn't really ideal since the majority of popular games are always going to be most likely very likely actually available on windows so not to discredit apple or mac os or anything like that but that's just a general truth i don't really see a major purpose besides just having the ability to be hardwired since everything is always going to be wi-fi nowadays but a thing that i do appreciate and do like is that the mid-tier mac does give you the touch ID on the keyboard, which I gotta say, I love this keyboard design. Not only are the edges perfectly curved to match the body design of the iMac, so it matches and blends in really well when it's nearby, but it's so convenient having touch ID right here on the keyboard. It literally takes like a second for it to register and unlock your device. And not only that, I really appreciate the fact that if you tap on it again, it will lock your machine. So you don't have to go into the settings anymore, put it in fleet mode or lock it to prevent others from having access to your device. You literally just tap and it does it in a matter of seconds. So it's more secure in my opinion, having the touch ID on the keyboard. Also makes transactions with Apple Pay a lot more convenient as well. Oh, and yeah, the mouse and keyboard charges with the included USB-C lightning cable, which is also braided to match the body of the design. And it's much more durable than the standard ones by Apple. As you can see, it's braided. And yes, you can use it on your iPhone, which I've been doing lately because it's more durable and prone from easily tearing up like Apple cables traditionally do. And speaking of colors, yes, I'm sure we all are aware. There's a variety of different color choices to choose from. Going with the mid tier allows you to have access to additional colors, but honestly, the entry level ones, I think already has the most popular colors, including this blue, which I really do like. It's just a shame that the metallic side blue, it's on the back side. In addition to that, I also like the fact that the Apple stickers are now changed as now they give you two coordinating the color of the body of the iMac. Now, another very noticeable change is the internal speakers. The speakers on this thing is mind blowing. Like it's actually kind of overkill in my opinion for a consumer, everyday consumer, machine it sounds absolutely fantastic you can play music in the kitchen or in the room and will actually be pleasant to listen to it's not going to sound terrible 
like you're playing audio through your phone speakers or something. The internal speaker on the iMac can actually fill up a room quite nicely. Now there is internal fans built into this iMac, which do kick on, but rarely. And from my understanding, the mid-tier and up iMacs are equipped with two fans because the GPU has an additional core. I'll talk more about the performance under real world in a little bit. But from my experience, just daily using the machine to browse the web, check on social media, maybe edit a couple of photos here and there. The fans rarely kick on, but when they do, they honestly just sound like regular MacBook speakers. Here, have a listen. Using a third-party fan control, I'm able to put these fans on max blast, and this is how they sound like. It's not at all obnoxiously loud. Other nifty things that I find interesting about these newly redesigned iMacs is that they're actually, the OS itself is also color coordinated on the device. Again, you could go into the settings and change this, but I like the small touch. So if you get the orange iMac, all your highlighted things on the OS are gonna be orange. And also from my personal experience, uh, dark mode doesn't really look that great on this machine. So for the first time ever, I have this Mac on light mode. I think it just matches well with the vessels. Now, back to the vessels. Uh, part of me actually like it, believe it or not. Maybe because my room is white, usually all my furniture in the household is now white. So in other words, it's just all personal preference, but if you really don't like the vessels being white, D brand has a solution for you. I'm pretty sure more third party accessories, vinyl wrap brands will soon make their version. So this bezel design, you can always just slap a sticker on it and make it blend better with the display if the screen is turned off. Now in terms of photo editing, which is something that I do do, after using this machine for one whole week, editing a couple of photos here and there, it's all right. It's not the best looking display. In my opinion, I have noticed that the darks, like the dark areas, in photos, including videos at times, look slightly more gray than they look in the actual photo. So if you are into photography, I would either consider getting an external monitor for this, but if you're editing something in a rush, this will get the job done. So for me, I'm just gonna go ahead and treat this like a backup computer. But in terms of editing videos, as long as your camera settings are correct, I don't see an issue. And now, since we're in subject of video editing, my main editing machine on the go is primarily my 16 inch MacBook Pro. Nothing special about it, it's the entry level 16 inch MacBook, but this is the machine that I use primarily for video editing because it's a laptop, I could take it anywhere on the go. And so out of curiosity, I time-lapse a 4K video export to see which one of these three machines was really the fastest to test out the M1 speed in the real world. And instead of using a graph with numbers and such like that, here's a real life footage of a time lapse that I filmed showing us that the 16 inch MacBook Pro was able to render the video in two minutes and 40 seconds. Follow up was the iMac. The iMac was able to finish that video render in four minutes and 20 seconds. And then in third place was the M1 equipped Mac Mini, which finished the video render at four minutes and 50 seconds. So not bad for a machine that only starts at the low $1,300. Now this is the mid tier, so it does have an extra core GPU. Maybe that's why it slightly beat the M1 equipped Mac mini. And in regards of this red screen, that's just saying that a plugin wasn't installed on this machine. As normal, it was still the same 4K video. So it's a good value in terms of editing 4K videos. It performs very well. Now back to the redesigned body. Compliment that I really do like is the fact that the headphone jacks are literally right here on the side. No longer do you have to reach in the back or anything like that. It's literally right here. That is very convenient. But a con that I don't like about it is the power button is still awkwardly placed in the back. It's not annoying, but it is an inconvenience having to reach back here. I think Apple would have been just better off if they moved the power button right next to the aux cable or down here somewhere. They could have just gone away with like a very small button that fits right there between that gap. Minor complaint, but an improvement. Nonetheless, they could have easily done. Now my Mac, I did configure it with the standard 256 gigabytes of internal storage in real world with just Final Cut installed. That's how much storage that it comes available out of the box with the OS and such. But honestly, the reason why I don't always upgrade the internal storage anymore is because I just, I just store everything inside a 
very reliable but high performance external ssd these things are very inexpensive compared to how much apple will charge you for a terabyte to upgrade your internals and the cool thing is you can unplug it and plug it into another mac computer it's normally how i edit my videos nowadays i don't store it internally in the storage but that export video that you saw there the editing file was inside its internal hard drive so that was the real speed of the internal storage now a cool thing that i do appreciate that apple finally did throughout the years is they upgraded their webcam the webcam looks a lot better the new webcam it's clear it's awesome so all in all honestly this mac is amazing it could basically do anything that the average consumer needs it to do and if you have to if you need to edit a video in an emergency or something it can also make an excellent editing machine as the M1 chip has proven multiple times to be a very powerful processor and GPU. So I'll definitely recommend the $1,300 iMac over the one that I bought. Yes, you do lose the Touch ID, but $50 more, you could add that keyboard to your order, which I think that's a better value. There you guys have it. That is basically the review of the newly redesigned iMacs. These things look absolutely amazing. Front is debatable, but it'll work. It'll get the job done. If you enjoyed this video, like to see more, you know what to do. Hit that like button and get subscribed as I have an accessory guide video coming out for the iMac very soon. But in the meantime, if you wish to see more, check out this video over here. That's, that's a video that YouTube is recommending specifically for you. And then that video over there, that's just a video that was recently uploaded to the channel. Click on whichever one gets your interest, but I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.